pick by Schultz. Wow! Frederick sneaks past, gets close enough. Oh! Walters, Sonny, Sonny! Frederick, how clever. Party tricks, they're everywhere. Schultz! Well, the question got answered on the weekend. How do you beat Melbourne? Well, Fremantle said, that's how you beat Melbourne, and that's going to be the blueprint, Joey, going forward for most teams. Yeah, it is the blueprint, but in all honesty, there was no sort of secret herbs and spices to winning that game. It was just built on effort. I mean, it was a lot of winning centre bounce, particularly in that third quarter. But getting the ball in your front half, having tools that can compete and be able to bring the ball to ground, and then your smalls getting to work and able to apply pressure, lock it in, turn the ball over and get your opportunities. And I just thought, when you look at, if you looked at the, the raw numbers, King, you're like 100, Freya took over 110 uncontested marks. But in quarters one and three, when they really controlled the game, they only took 39 uncontested marks to 35 entries. When they controlled the ball probably a bit too much in quarters two and then the last quarter, probably to milk the game, 76 uncontested marks. They only had the 18 entries. So it still shows you can't go slow against Melbourne. You, you, you've still got to go at them. And I think Fremantle were prepared to take territory, go to the contest, back in their tools and their smalls at ground level. And I just thought it was a terrific performance. What did you think, Kingy, about the stoppages? Was that a defining moment? Yeah, I, I disagree a little bit. I, I think that... Um... I think that Fremantle were able to force Melbourne into turnover immediately at the source. So go to the third quarter and just have a look at how, at times, it's, it's one-on-one. At times, they're outnumbered Fremantle. But they hunt. They hunt after the, the, the pure clearance players from Melbourne. So Oliver, not able to get that ball out. Gorn, not able to get that out. Viney, not able to get that. Look at the numbers just swarming on them. So it might start as 6v6, but it almost ends as a 4v1 or a 4v2. And then you get your time to knock it forward. All around the source, all hunting the footy, all hunting and gathering their own possession, but in a, in a team fashion. Same thing again here. So four on four. This is Melbourne are dominant in here. We know we know what they've been over the last couple of years. Look at that, three v one. Petrarca's clearly crook. We we know he's crook. He's just not even moving. He's still in the centre circle there. Mm. So you, you know that he's impacted. So when it's four v three, you can have some fun. So I think they got some spoils Fremantle that they may not get on another occasion if they had a front up against Melbourne uh, again later in the season. But whilst they had it, they were exceptional. Yeah, that this is not Christian Petrarca. That's no. just not him. I'm sorry. But Fremantle said. Come with us. We're, we're proactive. We're going to make you pay. And in terms of making them cough the ball up, it was 16 to 10 in Melbourne's favour, starting with the ball like this in the third term, OK? This is what the dogs do really well. They, they, they lose hit out, they lose the initial first possession, but then they end up winning clearance. So 16-10 down in first possession, but they won the clearances in this quarter, 17 to 7 Fremantle. That's a huge reversal. So it's not necessarily being tougher at the coalface, it's being able to harass, and then the scores flowed. Four goals uh, to one point in that period in the third term. So there's a little bit of strategy to it, a little bit of science to it. They played Oliver really well. Um, Petrarca was banged up, yep. but you've got to get the job yep. done and full credit to them. That was the effort and getting after them and getting yep. their opportunities. Yep. Sticking to that third quarter in particular, where, where they dominated, the two that really stood out for me was Brayshaw and Brody, And, I mean, they're already in, in a lot of the clips yeah. that you showed. But when you look at their third quarters alone, Brayshaw, eight disposals, four clearances, four inside 50s, two tackles and a goal assist. I mean, he's been awesome all year. But in particular, in this third quarter, they stood out with what they were able to do. So Brayshaw there. And then Will Brody's third quarter as well. He had the seven disposals, also four clearances, two inside 50s, two tackles and a goal assist. So between them, they were the two that really were instrumental in breaking Melbourne's hearts, winning those clearances, getting the ball inside 50 and giving their forwards a chance. What about Michael Frederick? We saw a little bit of party tricks and good. 17 disposals, a couple of goals, but just the live wire up forward. Yeah. you, you got to love the, the way, yeah. just the confidence Slick to take Rick, it off. They call him Slick Rick. He's, um, he, he was awesome. He, as you said, the 11 score involvement, 17 disposals, two goals, one, but he's been threatening to do this all year. He's been a player that if you've been watching Fremantle closely, he's <laughs> He's always doing stuff, even he has little possessions. He's one of those guys, high impact, low possessions. 
but he stood out to everyone. The footy world saw him on Saturday afternoon with what he's able to do. He's got high-speed endurance. He does both sides of the ball. He pressures and gets after the oppo, but he's got the class to finish. And it was great to see him get his rewards because he's had a lot of games where he could have got on the end of a lot of goals mm. and hadn't, but on the weekend he did, and he deserves his credit. He's been super. He's a nightmare matchup because yeah. he, he works up and down the ground. He's never comfortable in a player like that. So he's got an amazing ability to, to through not cheating, but to work full length again and yep. finish him behind his opponent. Yep. Oh, I think he's, uh, he's, he's another wild card player that you're going to need in a final series to bob up and kick two or three.